Do you like Five Nights at Freddy's? Do you like Zack's gas station? Do you also like performing monotonous retail jobs while being threatened by supernatural entities and monsters lurking at night inside of a gas station? While also venturing out to fix a flimsy generator that could have been replaced ages ago? Well thankfully for those who have that specific niche, I've got epic news for you. Cliffside Station is a Roblox horror game that is the quintessential example of Five Nights at Freddy's if it had the cooperative nature of Zack's Gas Station, another Roblox game. Funnily enough, there's actually a FNAF co-op game on Roblox, but it's goofy and, yeah, not really all that scary. Anyways, Cliffside Station involves you and your team managing a gas station, restocking supplies, handling customers, and then inevitably having to deal with a bunch of vengeful ghosts who, for some reason, want the staff dead. There's also a weird noob monster who's just there, I guess, but hey, what can you do against a bunch of angry, invisible people? I'm Viridian, and I talk about niche Roblox games, and today we're looking at Cliffside Station. As always, be sure to suplex that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications to ensure that you don't miss any future videos like this one. When you join a lobby, be it multiplayer or solo, I don't care. You start out reading a newspaper advert for a security job, Five Nights at Freddy's style. Er, 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 er. Though this time you're at some random remote gas station instead of a piss poor pizzeria with some crusty busty robots. According to the ad, the gas station's hiring because of some rise in crime. Though I'm not entirely sure why it felt the need to mention hiring inexperienced workers so blatantly. You know what, actually, you know how hard it is for me to get an entry-level job where I live? I have an experienced resume, I applied to over 30 plus places, and they just ghost me. I saw an ad that, if I saw an ad that said hiring experienced, inexperienced workers, sign me up. Also, by the way, the pay is only 208.5 a week. That's less than Freddy Fazbear, er, 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 er. I'm calculating that, you'd be earning about $5.49 an hour on a 38-hour work week. That's quite literally exploitation, especially if you look up minimum wage laws online. Like this example here involving the relevant info from Australia, Canada, and the US. If the gas station wanted to be even cheaper, they could have just outsourced the job to a couple contractors from China or India or something. This is a jab at Plants vs. Zombies. Most of the team behind Plants vs. Zombies were replaced with outsourced work to a small team in India whose work is a significant downgrade in quality compared to before EA laid off the previous PVZ members in favor of cheap dog water foreign labor. Okay, interesting fact for me to learn today. All right. All right, so you start the game on night one. As you complete each night, the game gets progressively more difficult. Thankfully, there's an instruction manual with all the info you need to survive the game's mechanics. But for now, the first night has, as the instructional manual highlights, zero fucking threats. Kind of like Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Although you can get killed by some monster if you stare at the computer too long, or if you stay outside for too long and you like catch a cold or something. I don't know. During the night you get the opportunity to restock the store's shelves in preparation for the shift in the morning. While this is pretty manageable for the first night, since nothing happens, it gets more hectic as you play. Just a quick criticism, but the amount of text on the instruction manual for the first night alone- Oh! Jump scare! Look at all that text! Must be a reference to this FNAF game named Post Shift 2. Anyways, after beating the first night where nothing happens, your day shift starts. This is where the similarities with Zack's gas station begin. Kind of. You have a budget system that starts around $5,800, where you'll be able to handle well if your team plays their cards right. The developer's message in the lobby screen tells you that, that the day gameplay is lackluster compared to that of the nighttime section, so really you just gotta watch customers come and go into your gas station. It's a good scenario to sort of absorb the scenery around the map, which is presented in a pretty visually appealing style akin to early mid-2010s Roblox. By the way, you get a new night guide in the instruction manual after every night you beat, so you've got even more university essays to go through. Also, after you beat each night, you're greeted with a cutscene showing a messy storage room with red lighting. It's just kinda there, I guess? I mean, for the first two nights it introduces the new monsters, but after that the game just throws it in there for no reason. Like, the monsters stop appearing in these cutscenes, so you're just left with an empty fucking storage room, which is really funny, in an odd way. Anyways, after the first night and day cycle, this is where things finally escalate, if only a little bit. Night 2 begins with the introduction of the IRG Ghost. No idea why it's called that, probably some sort of gimmicky name that I'm not getting. IR Ghost is pretty simple, just sit on your ass on the computer and watch for the ghost on the screen. 
When he enters, which is alerted through the notification system, you look for him on the camera system and basically just sort of temporarily nuke him out of existence by hovering your flashlight over him before his next return. If you don't, then he'll stay in a random area of the station, waiting to strike anybody who walks into him. Like an invisible landmine. Remember how I mentioned getting killed while on the computer? Because you have to keep in mind of the window watching monster called the Shadow Stalker. It's a noob monster, because of course it is. I mean, seriously, weird strict dad. And he only watches a computer user. And he will wait for an opportune time to strike and give you back shots. To get rid of him, you have to look back from your chair periodically or else he'll munch you. Already on the second night, the problems start rearing their ugly heads. While it's not really the end of the world at this stage of the game, the progression and difficulty inevitably means that the ire ghost will become a lot more aggressive as you continue on, necessitating the need to always have someone man the computer every fucking night. If someone dies on the computer to the Shadow Stalker, good luck, cause now you've got to get another guy on the computer, taking away attention from stocking the store. Awesome. Also, this is the point of the game where you'll get punished for any minor mistake. For God's sake, you can get fined for letting a ghost in. This is the craziest phantom tax I've ever seen. Anyways, you beat the night and do the day shift as normal. On the third night, the night stalker arrives. He looks exactly the same as the shadow stalker, but don't get it twisted. Don't let that and the suspiciously similar name fool you. It's two different monsters. I, I think. The, the, the Night Stalker attacks during these increased paranormal activity events, though it's better to describe it as something like a Blood Moon event. I'm pretty sure it also makes the IR Ghost and Shadow Stalker a lot more aggressive, but anyways, <sighs> whatever. The Night Stalker will relentlessly try to climb into the station's windows, somehow requiring the player's full attention. Stopping the Night Stalker is also basically just clicking on the guy until he pisses off, like the Iron Ghost. Not entirely sure how the Night Stalker can just phase through a full glass pane, but I guess the station has rolled down windows or something. Or he breaks windows silently. One of those. At this point, some of you might have picked on the fact that this game is insanely dependent on good teamwork and communication. Now, I was lucky enough to have a very rare and in-demand material known as friends to play with. What can I say? I got hoes. I'm a Sigma with W Riz after all. For the most part, our experience was pretty smooth sailing. However, I can't really say the same for those who are forced to play with randoms because they have negative cancel tilt. Or maybe they have W Riz, it's just they're too busy mewing and can't communicate with their teammates in Discord chat. Anyways, nights 4 and 5 are the same as each other, with the latter just being more difficult. I'm pretty sure night 4 is the point where the dynamic weather system is introduced. From this point onwards, weather will occasionally hit the station, but the severity of the weather is dependent on a weird warning system from 1 to 6. You'll also only be warned for weather levels 3 to 6. The worse the storm, the harder it is for your team to do basically anything. Your vision gets blurry, the raining backdrop makes it hard to hear anything, and worse yet, there's a chance the power will go out. I'm just gonna say this right now, I was the person watching cameras the entire game. In other words, I did not give a shit about what was happening. I mean, my friends were definitely stressing about the weather and all that, but I wasn't. I was just in the office edging. When the power goes out, you're almost entirely fucked if you're either unprepared or if you don't do anything about it. As the instruction manual for this night reads, you're forced to trek out of the station into the wilderness to repair the station's generator. Given that the generator is a literal goddamn forest, have fun getting lost on the way there. If you don't reach the generator and repair it, or really do whatever outside objectives the game forces on you, you either suffer maximum anxiety or lose the game when daylight arrives. Power outages itself are bad for the station, since the computer shuts down, giving the IRG ghost free reign of the place. Trying to wait out the power outage is also an instantaneous game over, since it will literally bankrupt your station. Like, we were legit convinced that we could just wait out the storm, but then BAM! Phantom Tax! The store caused irreparable damage to our station because we didn't repair the generator. Yeah, that's night four for you. Enjoy doing the same in night five. Oh my god, that's so stupid. Also, if you succumb to anxiety, you're teleported to some sort of weird, anxiety-ridden limbo state. Have fun getting out of there because, like, only two people have the badge for escaping it. Do you hate grittying out in the middle of the night in this game, having to deal with anxiety, and fixing the power generator? Well, I have epic news for you. The game introduces a new outdoor mechanic on the sixth night. Missing persons. At random points in the game, you'll have to trek out of the station and hunt down a bunch of betas 
who roamed in the woods and ended up losing their duo in the mess. This is pretty hard to explain, but essentially you'll have to find these people or else the game will punish you for not finding them, which is usually a massive cut to your budget. According to the manual, the station is responsible for locking out for any missing persons nearby. Why this isn't delegated to law enforcement is beyond me. Is it the police department just completely broke or something? I mean, if they had to hire random people, maybe they should have just delegated that job to Waffle House or something. Oh, and when you do find these missing people, sometimes they're just straight up dead. Night 7 is the last night of the game. There are no new mechanics, just like in Night 5, but keep in mind, this is where the game finally throws everything right at your face. If you can even remember all the mechanics, introduced during the past six nights and have a stable store budget, this is where your knowledge and coordinated coordination skills are finally put to the test. If you've been struggling up to this point, then good luck because it's basically the whole world against you. But honestly, if you were already good at night five, then you're more than fine here. Just do the exact same thing you did earlier, except there's more ghosts and all that. If you beat the seventh night, you're greeted with a cutscene introducing you to the station's unseen manager. He congratulates you and your team, if you have one on your efforts and then ambiguously alludes to some mysterious incident from before you took the job without ever elaborating. He then tells you to go home and have a break while whatever crap he's working on can finally come to fruition or something, which probably says something about the manager having to do something with the monsters that attack the station. There's also a bad ending, apparently, but I've no idea what that's about. Anyways, would you be surprised to hear that I actually like this game? As much as I sort of shit all over the game mechanics of Cliffside Station, it's actually pretty high quality despite its many blaring hiccups. The inspiration for Five Nights at Freddy's is also pretty clear. It's pretty obvious that this whole game's shtick is just one guy does this while another guy does this. If anything, it's difficult to play this game with randoms, if not impossible, when doing it solo. You have to divide up responsibilities, with one guy planted on the computer 24-7 while the others handle the store, while occasionally sending the fourth guy to go find missing people or fix the generator. Really, most of this game's issues stem from the difficulty. It really is just too difficult for new players to get in. And there's no real replay value, unlike most new Roblox games. Replay value is one of the most important aspects of modern games, not just limited to Roblox, and it's usually the reason why this platform has so many god awful microtransactions or mechanics that are intended to prey on users' playtime, especially if they're subscribed to Roblox Premium, like me. Replay value isn't inherently a bad thing itself, but a lack of it is definitely bad. The linear structure of the night's difficulties, the mechanics forcing players to be assigned to one particular role for almost the entire game, the harsh punishment the game lands for even the smallest of mistakes, and generally just how rigid this game is structured outside of the random events, means that there's a massive skill gate that blocks newcomers from being able to enjoy this game properly, which is why nobody fucking plays it. However, Cliffside Station ties together its mechanics pretty well. As messy, chaotic, and even unfair at times it is, having a coordinated team means that a few issues are alleviated, if not all of them. It obviously doesn't extinguish the problem of Cliffside's difficulty if you have everyone on board, but if you're able to hold IRG Ghost and Night Stalker at bay while someone manages the Ray stalking while another does the outdoor objectives, then it makes the game considerably easier since not one person is really forced to do multiple objectives at once. As long as nobody dies or messes up badly. To be fair though, I mostly spent time on the cameras, so my friends did the heavy lifting. Call me lazy all you want, but if it weren't for me, IRG Ghost would have been munching my ass and my friends. The graphics and presentation of this game is also something I liked. Although it isn't one of the most touch on aspects of the game, simple graphics and detail of the game's map and presentation of the monsters, or at least the Night Stalker and the Shadow Stalker, considering it was made by somebody else according to the credits really makes the atmosphere between day and night distinguishable. By day, it's a pretty calming at experience that's even more akin to the classic Roblox style of maps. Nothing unusual, just everyday Roblox. By night, the lighting makes the world feel uncomfortable to venture out, and even then, the station itself isn't safe from the dangers lurking outside. The story was kinda shit though, aside from the parts where the lore just gets kinda weird, like how the station underpays its workers, or the mysterious manager having little to no buildup before his appearance in the game's ending. Coupled with the random lore drops in the instruction manual that are ultimately inconsequential and even missable, like how the station's obligated to find missing persons. The story ultimately feels like something that was slapped on at the very last moment. There's very little storytelling in the game itself, and most of it is communicated in the instruction manual as well, 
mostly to very vaguely explain why the difficulty ramps up towards the end of the game. Overall, Cliffside Station is a good game. I liked it personally. It has a strong emphasis on team cohesion and cooperation, making sure everybody does their specific task while ensuring each other's survival. Either it be stopping IRG ghosts off the cameras, repairing the generator, or staring down Night Stalker from the windows. The visual presentation is simple, effective, and doesn't overstay its welcome. Its problems, though, stem from the utterly insane difficulty, terrible punishments for teams who make certain mistakes, the absolutely convoluted amount of mechanics that get increasingly thrown your way as you play the game, and the day shift basically being pointless, maybe not as important as the other problems. The lackluster story kind of takes away from Cliffside Station, driving away attention and new players, even if a big YouTuber like Rogert has played it before. In some way, Cliffside Station is simultaneously interesting, uninteresting, balanced and unbalanced. The premise of the game is intriguing and obvious inspired by Five Nights at Freddy's in format, with everything tying together nicely if your team can handle it. In the face of new, solo queue, players basically just the average Roblox player, it falls apart pretty quickly. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Bredian and I talk about niche Roblox games. Thanks for watching. Also, like the last time with the Venom Shang video, this was a collaboration between multiple talented people because I have exams this week. Be sure to check out their channels in the description. Anyways, it's time to show off the fan art. Oh wait, cut that part out. I'm, I just cut that part out. I left that in. Cut that out, editor, sorry. I'm actually gonna give shout out to my fan art right now before we end the video. I wanna say, Aliko, she made this one. I really like this hand-drawn style. It's very cute. Thank you. Uh, Miss Valentine. I think I already featured this one. Miss Valentine makes a lot of art for my channel, and it, it hits every time. <laughs> this was made on my birthday by Yaku Danchi. I think I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I'm so sorry. Very sweet. I like the body pillow. I wish I had one of them in real life. Burger had made this one. Very accurate. I do have level 10 Riz, level 10 Gat. Build Out Field made this one. He also made the intro to my channel. Check it out in the description. Um, but yeah, I really like the second panel of this comic for absolutely no reason in particular. Paint Ninja Cakey made me if I was a duck, and I really like this because my favorite animal for most of my life used to be a duck. Then I just kind of fell off, and I don't know. I think it's like a something stupid now. I think my favorite animal is like a flamingo or a peacock or something now. So uh, another one by Miss Valentine. I love the jaw structure, very accurate. And I like the eyes because this is actually the face I have in Roblox. You just don't know because I have the, the shades. This is another one where I'm reading chat of my April Fool stream. And I don't want to explain chat, but that was the scariest chat I've ever seen in my entire life on a stream. I'm not going to explain it, but let's just say you just had to be there to see it on April Fool's. I really always, I always like the amount of like detail you put into like the you know, the manly parts of me <laughs> is it that sounds a little zesty, but I mean like the collarbones and all the, the fucking cheekbones, like you really put out for me. So thanks. This is made by trashy drew me as has been hotel character. What's his name? Alistair. Yeah. That guy. Very nice. Very cute. Thank you. That, that Coomer was back. back. I thought it was gone to goon too. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Thank you. Trashy. Love you. And area bind is the last person I want to shout out in this video he made this edit that I cannot play, but he gave me credit to put it on TikTok and Twitter. You can view it there. I can't play it because it's copyrighted. Once again, another wiki thing is basically just informative about, um, you know, Roblox games, so you don't have to watch my videos about them if you don't want to. And honestly, I a lot of people on here have been cooking lately. I really enjoy your articles. You guys share them all with me. It's very nice. So Dane, he wrote the chain article. Mogger6969 wrote the Tradelands article. Fire Z, he wrote the Residence Massacre one. Liver Salad, um, he edited the Robert article. Water Mayoni, he made the Ice Spice and the Leon one. I love you, Water Mayoni. You've always been there for me since years now. Invet, he absolutely fucking cooked on the Undead Nation article. As well as Z Spider, he wrote the Cool Killer article. So thank you all for your contributions on the wiki, and when I hit 35,000, I'll make it public so we can all share our passion for niche games in a nice little community. Thanks for being patient with this video. Thanks for watching. I had, I had exams. Last week was probably the worst week in recent times. Exams. People. What? That beanbag always been there. I'm going to shit my pants no if you don't turn the lights there. back on. If you Please, please. I'll go down there. I'll go down there.
Night, I'm scared. Me and Robert are. Oh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>